So the Leica 10 to 25 is an amazing lens with no real full frame or even APS-C equivalents for any system. It's undoubtedly a lens for professionals. I mean, just look at this thing. It is giant. But exactly which professionals? I mean, is this a photography lens or a video lens or maybe even could be used as a cinema lens? Let's check it out. Before we get into it, I would definitely watch the whole video if you have the time, but if not, you can find chapter markers in the description or you can just go to these chapter times for whatever section you find the most interesting to you. So what is the case for using this lens for photos? Well, there's a few. This thing is a 10 to 25 or 25 to 50 millimeter equivalent, which I find much more useful on average than your typical 24 to 70 range, like a lot of lenses have. This means you can get a pretty wide field of view at the wide end and go into like a normal length, like a 50 millimeter for a variety of work, sort of some normal portraits and maybe some photojournalism type stuff. The lens is fast and more than sharp enough for most kinds of work. Sure, the smooth aperture thing isn't particularly photographer friendly, but if you set it to A on the aperture ring, then you'll be able to control it with the body once again. It might not be the best all rounder for photography as I think it is slightly weak for landscapes, travel and real estate. This lens has been reported to have some field curvature which basically means the edges of the image wide open are always going to be slightly blurry if you focus just for the middle of the frame. That's probably fine for most things, but it could be a major downside to landscape photographers who might want the brighter aperture for low light. Same thing for real estate, where you want everything pretty much in the focal plane to be sharp and in focus. I don't think 20 millimeters is quite wide enough for real estate work anyway, I also think for travel, it's a little or even a lot too big. I truly would not take this on vacation with me. It's just way too big and expensive. Even if it fit in my bag nicely, I am way too paranoid about it getting stolen. So in summary, depending on your needs, this could be a pretty great lens for photography, but I think the field curvature and kind of limited range is gonna restrict it from being a perfect photography lens. So as Gordon Lang said, this is kind of the holy grail for video shooters. He did say that, right? The range we talked about in the photo section is super nice. And I really have no problem giving up some of the telephoto range when compared to the Panasonic 12 to 35, for example, when what I get is a much faster lens with a pretty decent amount extra on the wide end. And real quickly, here's the difference between f2.8 and f1.7. The image quality is pretty much the best I've seen in 4K and the manual focus, iris and smooth, effectively par focal zoom make this lens a dream to handle. And the results are good too. It's got pretty attractive flares, Pretty nice bokeh, at least for a zoom lens, and pretty much the best implementation of autofocus I've seen on a Panasonic body. I mean, I know that's not saying much, but if you can use autofocus with this lens and be pretty good. I mean, secretly, all right, we're good. This is a secret here, so we gotta talk, gotta talk quick. I filmed all my YouTube videos with this lens on autofocus, unless it's super obvious it's not this lens. So yeah, you can absolutely do it. And I'm still working on a video to explain how. Anyway, sorry for this. Oh my gosh, my mic. It's, it's so bad. The weather ceiling is sort of that final thing to make this lens great. It makes it durable in many situations. And the only downside is that there's no optical image stabilization. If you don't have a camera with IBIS, that's going to be a problem. But if you got the GH5 or the G9 or something like that, it would be pretty much fine. Honestly, my personal biggest gripe for sort of multi-camera video shooting is that there are no real other lenses in this series. 
I mean, I know Panasonic and Leica have made other lenses, but they're either the prime lenses that are a little bit faster or they are the f2.8 to f4 zooms. Neither are really guaranteed to match perfectly in terms of character and definitely not in terms of having a decent zoom range and an f1.7 aperture. So it would be nice if there was like a 25 to 50 or something, 30 to 60 f1.7 big brother to this lens eventually. As someone who's kind of obsessed with making like lens sets that completely match, don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is the biggest downside for me because if it existed, I would definitely buy it. Overall though, this really is like the best of the best. If you shoot video primarily for the GH5, I don't know how you aren't at least wanting this lens. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is, is this secretly a cinema lens? Mm, maybe? I mean, when I think of a cinema zoom, I think of a smooth zoom, focus, and aperture. For Sure, this doesn't come set up with gears right out of the box, but you could pretty easily find some for it, and I think it would work pretty well. There's a few things that might disturb me, though. One is that manual focus clutch. Sure, it is effectively a manually controlled lens in this mode, but it doesn't really have hard stops. I've heard them described as soft stops, where you can like feel when it gets to the end of the range and it makes a click, but if you really wanted to, you could keep turning that focus ring to no effect. This could mess with some follow focus setups you guys are using out there. It also isn't really the longest focus throw. Most cinema lenses being about 180 degrees for focus or more, up to like 300 or more. The Leica has only about a 90 degree turn, which can be great for run and gun video, but could be a little too short some of the time for, you know, short films or other projects. I also see cinema lenses as bringing a look or a, you know, character to a project, like a style. And to me, the Leica does have those things, but just not as much as a lot of cinema lenses might. It pretty much has perfectly neutral color, Pretty decent bokeh, like I said, especially for a zoom, but none of it at the end of the day really instills a sense of emotion in me, really. I mean, it'll look fine, but this lens is more workmanlike than creative or quirky. I know a lot of cinema lenses are very well corrected. This is too for a lot of things, but I don't know. It just doesn't, it just doesn't say cinema or cinematic to me. I don't know what it is. It also does extend quite a bit, both at the wide and the telephoto ends when zooming, which would be maybe a pain for people that use matte boxes. Not really my thing, so I can't say much about it. And lastly, I just mentioned this in video, but in case you didn't watch it, there's no telephoto version of this lens to round out that kit again, which is even more important for cinematic sort of work. That means your focal range could end up being pretty limited from a creative standpoint. So could this stand in for a cinema lens? Not right out of the box. And even with all the stuff, it wouldn't be right for every project. But if something were to need a super sharp, super perfect look, it would add to the story. I definitely wouldn't hesitate to use this lens. It would totally get the job done. For the most part though, I would consider something like the DZO film cinema zoom lenses instead, which come with the gears have a little bit more character and they have a 10 to 24 as well as a 20 to 70 although they're going to be a little bit slower too so at the end of the day yes it is absolutely possible to get great photos or videos or films uh, whatever with this lens but for me it really only checks all the boxes for people who either do all three or especially the video guys out there doing your interviews, corporate work, weddings, um, anything that is either run and gun or probably some more controlled settings where that look, that sharp, perfect look is kind of desirable. But for me, when making deliberate filmmaking, high-end dedicated cinema lenses make a lot more sense. And I think for photography, this is definitely an area where the handful of small primes sort of idea makes a lot more sense. You could definitely get the same or very similar results with even the cheapest Nifty 50 f1.7 prime lenses. 
Well, guys, thanks for coming along for another video dedicated to the Leica 10 25. Uh, if you made it this far, I assume you liked the video. If you did, please go down and hit that like button. It really helps a lot. While you're down there, please let me know. Do you have the Leica 10 25 and what do you use it for? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more filmmaking, gear, lens reviews, I would definitely consider subscribing to get notified when my new videos go live.